Hey folks, your OS Reviews. You're watching our retro review of the Motor Rocker E6. This was a smartphone that came out back in 2006, and it was actually originally released in Asia and China, but you can also pick it up unlocked, you know, a few years back. And it ran on this interesting proprietary Mantra Vista Linux operating system, uh, the same OS that we saw on the Motorola Ming, another unique smartphone that we reviewed on our channel a few years back. So the phone itself has a 2.4 inch resistive touchscreen display, so you can use a stylus or your fingernail to apply a bit more pressure when tapping, and you can see that the phone automatically comes on when you tap on the display as well. The form factor is a candy bar or a slate, and it's actually not as small as a lot of other older smartphones that we've seen. So for instance, if we compare it against some other phones that we have, uh, perhaps the Palm Pre, which is another pretty early smartphone, but you can see that the size here actually isn't super small, like something like the Veer, but uh, it's comparable. So here's another few phones, the Nokia Asha 501. So you can see it's pocket-sized, uh, but also not the smallest thing in the world. Otherwise, we have controls, and the way that they're laid out in this really flush manner is reminiscent of the Motorola Razor, and so that was where Motorola drew inspiration from the aesthetic design of this phone. Otherwise, there's a tr traditional five-way navigation toggle, there's a Motorola logo, the backlight here is also a pretty interesting blue, uh, which is fairly attractive to look at, and there's also talk and end keys that dubs as the power key, in addition to a web browser key, and also a shortcut that takes you uh, into the real player, which allows you to play back videos as well as movie files, and was one of the features of this smartphone. On the left-hand spine of the phone, you have access to a volume rocker, a slot for a full-size SD card, pretty rare in this day and age, and it's also hot-swappable without having to turn off the phone first, and there's also, there's also controls for play pause for your media controls and skip track controls for your music, which is actually pretty cool to see. Unfortunately, the volume rocker here is extremely flush with the surface of the unit, making it hard to differentiate and tap it by feel. The top of the phone features access to a lanyard strap and a full 3.5mm headphone jack for listening to music. The other side features a quick launch key that allows you to lock the phone's display when you're in a pocket, and there's also ringtone settings that you can mute. The Motorola logo, the bottom features a mini USB for charging and syncing information, a lock for the battery door which is made out of aluminum, and a stylus slot which is a telescopic stylus that extends as such for handwriting recognition purposes or if you don't want to use your fingers. There's also a 2.0 megapixel camera on the rear with a vanity mirror or self-portrait mirror along with the loudspeaker. You'll see a very small switch here that allows you to toggle between landscape and macro shots. This is pretty important because another selling point of the Rocker E6 with its, was its QR functionality, just like the Motorola Ming. So if you had a business card, for instance, it could scan it and then digitally translate everything from the contacts to their phone numbers into the phone's memory, which is actually pretty nifty for people, uh, for maybe business people on the go. Behind the back cover, there's a full-size SIM card slot because this was a quad-band GSM world phone and uh, the battery itself, which was removable. So in terms of other hardware functions, there's um, access to Bluetooth on here, but unfortunately there was no Wi-Fi access, which was again a point of critique at the time. So despite the relatively low 2 megapixel hardware, it actually takes pretty decent images, surprisingly. It takes a bit of adjustment, but uh, it does work fairly well. So if I have something to take a quick image of, perhaps just this basic Motorola battery, I'm going to make sure that I'm in the macro mode first. I can get pretty close to the shot, and there's a few things I can set through in terms of the resolution, saturation, brightness controls, and when I'm ready, I can capture it fairly easily. You can see that the menu here is actually pretty intuitive, and it doesn't take that long to completely take an image. And from here, I can also share it with friends and family, send it via Bluetooth, or add it as an email attachment. So there's quite a few features on here. It's always interesting to see different operating systems, especially mobile OSs, and we're a huge fan of that, as you can tell from our name. So this was a treat to look at back in the day. Powering things on, again, we have this interesting proprietary Linux operating system. It's not the fastest thing in the world. In fact, it's a little bit sluggish to load even basic tasks, but it does have a few interesting UI UX implementations that we want to discuss. For one, there's, is, there's this uh, shortcut of a few icons on the very top of the display that you always have access to, uh, no matter you know from what menu you're in, and these are things such as the main menu drawer, there's also one for your contacts, one for your notifications, one for your emails, and another one for uh, your dialer pad for your phone. So these are always going to be here for easy access, pretty similar to webOS we saw with uh, Palm and HP. 
So in the main menu drawer, there's access to all of your programs, and you can install more Java programs and games, and some other proprietary Linux apps can run on here as well. And by default, there are a few games built on here. For some reason, since again, this phone came out in China first, there is this uh, Sim, The Sims based uh, game which takes you in this virtual world and tells you to feed characters and give them tasks to perform in a map that you can expand on, but it's in this uh, Snow White theme, which is kind of peculiar. There's another Java app on here that uh, tells you the hardware specifications of the phone, so it's uh, interesting. It gives you a bit of um, info about the performance as well as how fast the phone is in terms of benchmarks. So for instance, if we run a quick test here, it tells you your frame rates, um, so it's an interesting very early app on here. It tells you the game scene as well as the load times and you can also tap on phone info for instance common to see the amount of memory on here. Um, the processor of this phone is an Intel X scale 301 megahertz processor. It's a single core chip. Other apps in here we have the aforementioned barcode scanner for your business cards. So let's try to scan a business card and see how well it fares. It's actually decent but it doesn't get things all the way right. Sometimes it misses a few things and uh, miscaptures or misread things and doesn't translate into the best experience, but it takes a few seconds to recognize. Reminds me of the Panasonic Neophile, a dedicated business scanner gadget that we also checked out in a retro review a few years back. Um, so you can see that it's a try to put in the name as well as the email, but there's quite a few errors here that you can edit and go through. We're not going to save this, so let's just exit out of that. Pretty interesting app they tried to do. Another interesting app on here was the ability to connect it to your computer and use the phone as your webcam. So in the early days when not all laptops came included with a webcam, you could use this phone, um, the software, as you know, your camera. So it would recognize it as a dedicated webcam. Kind of interesting for Skype calls as well as video conferencing. There's also an FM radio that requires you to plug in a pair of headphones to act as the antenna, a sync computer, basic alarm, photo editing functionalities, notes that you can use. So if we tap on this really quickly and tap again on here, we should have the ability to bring up the handwriting recognition. Reminds me a bit of graffiti where you have to write in things such as A for instance, and it tries to recognize that as a letter that you've inputted. If you don't want to use handwriting recognition, you can use the English keyboard. It brings up a QWERTY keyboard, but you can see how small this is, and that's why you really need to use the stylus for text entry since it really becomes very difficult. Um, one thing I do like about the phone's design, though, is that the screen itself is flush, but back in the day, a lot of touchscreen phones with resistive screens had recessed screens, so if you used a Windows mobile phone, it wasn't always the sleekest experience, and the Rocker E6 tried to put this fusion between style and also performance by making the phone itself actually fairly attractive uh, for you know a device that came out a decade ago. But obviously, a lot of these utility apps are still quite difficult to operate. Calculator on here, the aforementioned real player for handling movie files works quite well. You can also manage your files, which is a file manager on here, an email client, a basic web browser that uh, does a decent job of rendering pages, but again it's pretty slow since you don't have Wi-Fi connectivity. There's also a viewer on here that it can access PDF and Word, Excel, and PowerPoint documents, but you aren't able to edit them, although you can always install another app if you wanted to to get more functionality out of that. So here's the contacts list that you can see your friends and family, their information, again notifications for missed messages and voicemails, and here we have uh, your emails as well. So for instance, if we look at sent items, you can see a list of all your emails you've sent that you can scroll through and you can also use this tab on the side here to navigate. You can get to a specific place and it's smart enough to remember where you were. So if you go back to the same tab, it remembers the place that you were last on. So you can easily look at stuff, delete messages, sort your messages by something, um, also send or reply to all. Finally, there is a phone dialer, which works pretty well, and the keys themselves are fairly large and easy to tap on or press on. Call quality and reception is actually quite good. We tried it with both T-Mobile and AT&T here in Seattle, and we didn't have any issues uh, to note. The microphone here is noise canceling, so even outdoors it worked pretty well. And the mic here, as well as the headset part, is actually quite loud, so we can hear everything uh, that we wanted to listen to. So going back to this main menu here, we can see a few more things such as reception, battery status, time and date, as well as a few additional shortcuts that do go away when I'm in other menu drawers. So from here though, I do have access to things such as the dedicated web browser, the camcorder, as well as turning Bluetooth profiles on or off. Another kind of neat trick here is I can just look at the home screen picture if I want to by tapping on this once if you just want to look at this and you can reset this as well as go through a few other profile settings by adjusting this in the settings drawer. So if we want to take a quick look at that, 
tapping on setup. Again, you notice some of the lag on here, not the fastest thing in the world. We're in this golden scheme here, but there's also a black and white theme for more a dramatic appeal, and there's also a blue theme, so you can really customize the way that the phone looks, kind of like skins on top of Android or launchers as we know it today, but this was a very early implementation of that, which was kind of interesting. Text size, you can change the language, you can recalibrate the touchscreen, you can set a security password, how long the phone goes to sleep, as well as the wallpaper. So you can take a look at you know, all of these preset wallpapers that uh, you had bundled with the phone at the time. So you can tap on one to get a quick glimpse at what it is and then exit out of it again. So really quite an interesting phone, really not a bad phone either, but it was an early attempt to bridge this notion of a smartphone, which back in 2006 was bulky and ugly since it had to feature a high-end processor and all of these wireless connectivity. Needs. The Rocker E6 tried to also make it attractive, so regular consumers could pick up something that's sleek, uh, but also powerful enough to handle more complex videos as well as documents when they needed it. Ultimately, it wasn't super successful because the screen itself was really too small, and the fact that it was still resistive made it difficult to enter text, and of course, without Wi-Fi, there's not too many fast connectivity options that uh, also limited the overall appeal of the phone. But uh, all in all, I would say that this is definitely an interesting phone from Motorola, and it marks this interesting mobile operating system that once competed with Windows Mobile, um, and later on, of course, Motorola transitioned just to Android completely. So thanks for watching this video retro review here at OS Reviews. This has been a look back at the Moto Rocker E6 smartphone.